Okay. So today we are very blessed to have this Tattva Bodha class uh, on Adi Shankaracharya Ji's Jayanti, right? So we are reflecting on the verses that were written by him centuries and centuries ago, and it still makes sense uh, to us in this uh, uh, time life. And uh, his wisdom is timeless, and we are truly blessed to have enjoyed the fruits of his labor. Um, which has been passed down through so many generations, through so many acharyas who have been continuing the lineage. And uh, it's a wonderful time to uh, reflect with a lot of gratitude that we have got this knowledge almost in an undistilled form, right? Without too much of deviation, uh, too much of, um, you know, uh, misinterpretations and so on and so forth. So for that, we have to uh, thank uh, Bhagavad Pada, Adi Shankaracharya and also all the gurus who came in this lineage. And uh, we are very blessed to uh, have this opportunity to reflect on this wonderful text, Tattva Bodha. Uh, and before we begin, we just I just uh, wanted to share uh, a little uh, uh, this thing. So Bhagavad Pada has been um, revolutionary in so many ways, right? So he came at a time when Hinduism needed a revival and uh, he didn't uh, he didn't fear or he didn't uh, um, uh, quell away from uh, challenging all the established norms and he wasn't afraid of asking questions and, uh, you know, establishing things in a new way so that it suits the way the people were living at that particular time, right? So, so much had changed by the time Bhagavad Pada was traveling all over India and uh, establishing Sanatana Dharma. And he made the ancient Vedic wisdom easily accessible to all. That's why he had written all this Tattva Bodha, Atma Bodha, Viveka Chudamani. If these three texts, if we study and reflect, even if we take one text and study and reflect, that itself is enough for us to understand our own true self and lead a life of, uh, uh, you know, joy and uh, uh, what to say, without too much of hassles or worry and uh, content in the knowledge of who we truly are, right? And uh, uh, as his, we are his disciples, actually, we are studying what he had taught us so many centuries ago. And uh, as his disciples, we should also take forward that legacy by not just uh, blindly confirming to whatever we are being told, blindly accepting whatever is being said and uh, use our intellect, use our power and privilege that we all have to question things that has to be questioned and uh, try to bring about um, a positive impact to everyone around us by making this ancient wisdom easily available to everybody also. This can be done by just trying to emulate this way of life how much ever possible in whatever little ways it is possible, right? We can't change everyone, but we can change ourselves. And by changing ourselves for the better, we bring a great one wonderful change in the world itself. So uh, with that small note, let's begin the class um, with the prayers as always. Om, Om Shri Ganesha Yanamaha Om Shri Saraswatyai Namaha Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Samasta Jana Kalyane Niratam Karunamayam Namami Chinmayam Devam Sadgurum Brahma Vidvaram Shruti Smriti Purana Nam Alayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Pada Shankaram Loka Shankaram Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari So in the last session, we saw about the three states of being, right? It all goes down to this uh, major question that we had. So what is, uh, what is Atma? Remember that question? So in that we say this Atma is beyond the, uh, is beyond the three states of experience. It's beyond the three bodies. It is beyond the five koshas. All this thing, I'm just trying to find that Atma. So it is apart from the Stula Shukshma said, uh, beyond the three states of experience, all this they are, uh, uh, Bhagavad Pada had, experience, uh, had explained as definition for Atma, right? Of that we have seen Stula Shukshma and Karana Sharira, we have already seen. And then we also saw about the three states of experience state that also we saw in the previous class. Now what is left is the 
panchakosha or the five sheets so today we are going to see about that we will not be covering all the five sheets today we will be doing three or four i am trying to do four so let's see uh, how much we are able to cover okay this is the next one panchakosha k annamaya pranamaya manumaya vijnanamaya anandamaya chiti so there are five koshas or five sheets sheet means covering all right just covering is what is kosha like how we have a knife and the knife or the sword uh, it has a scabbard in which they keep that sword right like that the sheets are there five sheets are there which is covering our own true self just like how a scabbard is different from the sword itself though the scabbard looks like a sword isn't it it has the same shape uh, it has the same length everything is pretty much the same as the sword but the scabbard and sword are two different things isn't it same way we have five all all beings have all human beings have five sheets or covering and though it emulates the property of the atman itself it is different from that of the atman and we are going to establish that all these are not me so the purpose of understanding all these three different bodies three states of experiences five sheets is to establish that i am not this i am something that is apart from this that is what uh, that is why we are studying about all these things okay all right so what are the five sheets annamaya pranamaya manomaya vijnanamaya anandamaya it is just a different form of classification pretty much like how we saw about the gross subtle and causal body pretty much the same but a different form of classification that's all okay all right so let's just go into annamaya kosha annamaya ka anna rasanaiva bhutva anna rasanaiva vriddhim prapyam anna roopa prithvyam फुड that which is born of the essence of food our bodies are made because of the food we eat yes or no the uh, our parents um, egg and sperm it all had come nourished by the food that they ate and then when the embryo was there inside the mother's womb the food that the mother eats nourishes the embryo and then it goes it grows into a beautiful fetus and once it comes out it is again nourished by the mother's milk which is also a form of food and the mother herself get the nutrients from the food that she eats so this body the gross body is called annam is also called as annamaya kosha is born because of the food the essence of the food food means not just direct food the essence of the food the nutrients and everything that the food gives anna uh, that's what is rasa rasanaiva uh, the born of the essence of the food and it grows because of the essence of the food right the body grows we saw the six stages of body no in stula shariram we saw asti jayate all this we saw remember so <laughs> it grows because of the food that we eat and finally what happens it goes and joins back to the earth Isn't it? Which is also a form of food. All food comes from earth, sir. Yes no. Even if we are eating uh, non-vegetarian food, that is again being nourished by food that is grown from the earth. Isn't it? So all food comes from the earth. So the body also, which is nourished by the food, should logically go back to the earth. Isn't it? So anna rasanaiva budva anna rasanaiva pridhim prapya anna roopa prithivyam prithivya prithvi is earth, and it goes in. reaches the earth this is called annamaya kosha and this is also the stula shariram all right so here if you notice annamaya kosha equals to stula sharira gross body pranamaya manomaya vijnanamaya these three equal to stul uh, sukshma sharira the subtle body and anandamaya equals to the causal body okay just a different form of reclassification all right okay so this is about the annamaya kosha 
And next, what is there? The next uh, sheath is called the Pranamaya Kosha. Again, as we proceed from Annamaya to Anandamaya, it becomes subtler and subtler and subtler. Okay, subtle means it becomes more pervasive. And um, um, it is not like as if the sheets go inwards and inwards, just like how we saw the gross body is having finite boundaries. The subtle body will have a bigger boundary and causal body will be even more bigger. But the essence of the causal body will also pervade into the subtle body and gross body. It's pretty much the same way. So don't think about shrinking yourself. Think about expanding yourself when we are uh, reflecting on all these koshas. Okay, so we have the Adnamaya kosha, which equals to the gross body. Next is Pranamaya kosha. Okay, so we will see about that. Pranamaya ka. Pranadhya, pan, pranadhya panchavayava. Vagindriyadi Panchatam Pranamaya Kosha. Pranadya Panchavayava. So there are five major pranas within the body. So this is called as vital energy or vital air. Prana means not breath. Prana means vital energy or vital air. It's called prana. So there are five major pranas within the body. We will see what they are. That five major pranas along with the five organs of action. We saw now in the subtle body, organs of action, organs of perception, Yanendriya, Karmendriya, we saw now the five Karmendriya, organs of action along with the five Pranas is called as the Pranamaya Kosha. Very simple, no? Okay. So what are these five major Pranas and what do they do? So the, uh, the vital energy uh, is modified into five or classified into five different uh, pranas based on the function that they perform. Okay, so first one, first one is called prana itself. So it is prana, apana, jnana, udana, samana. These are the five major pranas. Apart from this, we also have five minor pranas. Okay, let's not go into too much into that. But what do these five major pranas do is they uh, are responsible for various physiological functions happening in the body. Remember, physiological organs are there in the gross body. The energy that activates all these physiological functions are there in the subtle body. This we already saw, I'm just recalling here. Okay. So don't think that when I say prana, apana, and all, it is that uh, actual physical organs. No, it's not the physical organ, it is the Energize, uh, uh, energizing element that is making these physical organs work. So that is what is prana. So what does prana do? Prana is the function that is uh, taking care of respiration. Breathing in, breathing out. That is governed by prana. Okay, it is all modif same energy only because it does different functions. We are giving it different names. All right. So this is prana. Then what do we have? We have something called as the apana. So prana is breathing in and out. Apana is excretion, the process of excretion. Feces, urine, sweat, all this are getting released from the body periodically. No, if that doesn't happen, then the body will decay and we will die. So the apana vayu takes care of the excretion process. What is the third one? Third one is called samana. Samana does digestion. Whatever food we eat, it is getting absorbed and then uh, every cell is getting nourishment from the food that we eat, isn't it? So that process is done by the um, samana vayu. Then we have udana vayu. Udana vayu does opposing function like, you know, vomiting, sneezing, those kind of opposing function, uh, hiccups, all this are done by the, governed by the Udana Vayu. Even at the time of the death, only the gross body dies, subtle body continues to live, okay? So at that time, the separation of the subtle body from the gross body is also done by this Udana, vyana, udana Vayu, all right? And then finally, we have the Vyana. Vyana does circulation of, the blood circulation is taken care of by the Vyana. So these are the five major pranas. They are Prana, Apana, Samana, Udana and Vyana. These five pranas along with organs of action. Organs of action means, again, not the gross part of it. The energy behind the five <clears throat> organs of action. What are the five organs of action? Hands, legs, 
we saw no genitals organs of excretion and speech all, all these are the five organs of action the energy behind all this is called as the pranamaya kosha all right clear about this pretty straight forward no pranamaya kosha all right so when we are identifying with annamaya kosha we are identifying with the gross body i am tall i am short i am thin i am fat i am fair i am dark i am old i am young all these things we say no that is in association in reference to annamaya kosha so we have to remember we are not that that is not us all right and then when we talk about um, pranamaya kosha all this feeling of thirst and hunger is governed by the prana so when we say i am hungry i am thirsty uh, i am feeling full all these i want to uh, go to the restroom all these actions are there no so that is with respect to the pranamaya kosha all right next comes the manomaya kosha all right third third sheet so remember each with each sheet the uh, the nature of it gets subtler and subtler the subtler it is the more powerful it is okay remember that also all right manomaya kosha ka मनश्चानेन्द्रिय पंचक मिलिवा यो भवती स मनोमय कोश वेन द मैंड द मैंड एंड द फाइव ऑर्गन ऑफ पर्सेपन टूगेदर फॉर्म्स द मनोमय कोश ऑल राइट सो हियर लेट्स टेक अ मोमेंट एंड अंडरस्टैंड अबउट द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ मैंड ओके सो द मैंड स्टफ all right based on the function that it does is classified into four parts this is according to vedanta all right so yoga system has a different form of classification we are talking only from a vedantic perspective okay so in vedanta four major based on the function that the mind matter does the mind stuff does it is classified into manas buddhi chitta ahankar all right what does manas do manas is the seat of all our emotions anger sadness joy sorrow all this we experience no love affection uh, affinity dislike like hatred all this feelings related thing comes under the manas category same thing only based on the function that it does we are calling it by four different names okay and mind is also of the nature of chanchalatmika it is doubting is it this or that should i go left or right should i eat chapati or dosa for dinner or should i order outside options choices all this it is exploring no so that function is also that of the mind or manas so then what is buddhi buddhi is the intellect it is the deciding factor of the mind you know whenever we are in you we say no let's put our thinking cap on when we are logically reasoning analyzing when we are connecting the dots saying oh this happened so this is happening so this is happening a is equal to b is equal to c all this we say and then we say after the mind is all confused should i eat outside or should i eat chapati or dosa what should i do the intellect says enough eat tayar sadam and go to sleep you know that decision making part of the uh, the decision making function is called as the buddhi okay so then what is chitta chitta is the memory part of it we have so many memories stored in us right uh, for example um, suppose i see one beautiful soft red object on a plant i'm seeing that beautiful soft red object on a plant so what happens the mind matter immediately goes into the memories and think oh i have seen this somewhere it must be a hibiscus flower and then what will the manas say oh how are you saying it is high discuss it can be a red rose and then uh, something other oh no 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 it is not that it must be a bell flower so the chitta chitta is the memory it is recalling all the past impressions that we have we have of that soft red object that is there on a plant and it is throwing up something then the mind is questioning is it is it a high discuss is it a red rose is it a bell flower what it is i don't know or it is just some piece of paper that has just floated and staying on there then what does the intellect do it goes and it enquires probably it touches the flower it goes a little closer smells it okay it is gathering more information and then the intellect says oh this this is definitely rose because it smells like a rose and i have memory from previous impressions that this is how the rose smells this is how the rose looks so this is a rose 
So the intellect decides. All right. So this is how the manas, buddhi, chitta works. Clear about this thus far? So what is ahankara? The ahankara says, no, I know that this is a rose. I know that this is not a hibiscus. That I part comes, no? I, I know. I don't know. I am confused. I don't know what it is. That I comes in, no? That I is called as ahankara. Where we are bringing everything into a our own experience. I decided. I was confused. I was thinking like that. I was happy. I was sad. I was hungry. I need water. I am thirsty. This I, I, I comes into everything. No, that is called as ahankara. See, don't think that ahankara is a is a bad thing or oh, you know, because we say oh, he's a big ahankari. He thinks he knows everything. No, that is not the parlance in which ahankara is used. Ahankara is the identification that we have with ourselves. This is also a function of the mind only. Okay, so these are the four classification of the mind matter based on the function that they do. Manas, seat of emotion, um, doubting nature, buddhi, decision maker, logical thinker, that is buddhi. Chitta is the memory that we have. And ahankara is the I part of it, wherein everything becomes subjective to us. All right. We don't say, oh, the body is very tired. We don't say, oh, my heart. That also we say my heart. We don't say, oh, the heart is happy. We don't say, no. we only say, I am happy. I am sad. I am fat. I am hungry. All this we say only with respect to I, isn't it? That I part is called as ahankara. The Sahankara does a very peculiar thing, okay? It is this I, that Ahankara, that creates the separation between myself and everything that is not me. We only say, who is Aruna? Aruna is only identified as this body, no? The Ahankara part says, till this boundary, it is you. Whatever thoughts that I am able to see, only those thoughts are yours. Everything else is something other than you. So it is not you. Isn't it? That distinction that it brings, no? Between me, mine, and everything that is not me and mine. That is the role of Ahankara. And that is also the root of all our problems, isn't it? <laughs> if we treat everyone as an extension of ourselves, the way we talk, the way we speak with everyone, the way we treat with everyone will be very, very different. So here immediately you say, I am doing like that only. They are not doing what to do. I, I am kind. They are not kind. They are treating me like a doormat. So eventually we will learn how to deal with all this. Just because you are being kind and loving doesn't mean that you have to be a doormat. Isn't it? So all this will come as we reflect further and further on all this. So this is clear for now. The four functions of the mind. Okay. Because based on this only the... Um, the next sheets are going to come. So in Manomaya Kosha, what did we see? Manomaya Kosha is the mind aspect of it. Mind aspect, what does it do? Seat of emotions, chanchalatmika, the uh, inability to decide where it is thinking. Is it A or B, left or right, eat or not to eat, all this. We, we, we go through all the options that are available to us, isn't it? So that part of it is called as that part of it is that is called as the mind plus the five sense organs. We already saw the sense organs, whatever is there in the gross body is only a counter. Only that which is there in the subtle body is actually enlivening these counters. Isn't it? Without that, it is not able to perceive anything. So the mind matter plus the five sense organs is the manomaya kosha. Clear? About this, what is Manomaya Kosha? When we are identified with Manomaya Kosha, we say things like, I'm happy, I'm unhappy, I don't like that person, I don't want to do this, all this we say, no, that is in relationship, relation to Manomaya Kosha. Okay, I think I will just finish <laughs> this, okay. Vijnana Maya Kaha. Buddhi Jnanendriya Panchakam Militva Yo Bhavati Sa Vijnana Maya Kosha. When the intellect along with the five sense organs together forms the intellectual sheet of the Vijnanamaya Kosha. We already saw no buddhi, buddhi part of it. 
comes into play here when the buddhi and the sense organs together forms the intellectual sheath. Intellectual sheath, this is where all our values are seated. We all have different values in life and we have different values in different points of time in our lives. When we were students, we were focused on getting studying properly, getting knowledge, getting marks, getting a good uh, seat in a college. We had different set of values there. Hanging out with friends, chilling out, all this. Once we work, then we are like, I want to earn money. I want to get promoted. I want to get the appreciation of my colleagues and my boss. All this comes when we are working. When we have a family, we think more from a familial perspective, right? I have to provide for my family. I have to take care of my kids. The, the where the values are because our actions are driven by our values. This Vijnana Maya Kosha is the seat of all our values. All right. So this is the Vijnana Maya Kosha. And remember, this Vijnana Maya Kosha is what is the driving uh, thing of all the other sheets okay it is based on this values the seat of values our priorities all this that is there in our vijnana maya kosha based on that only we arrange our lives okay so if you if you think a little bit about it you will understand what it means so um, the intellect part of the intellect plus the sense organs constitute the vijnana maya kosha intellect is nothing but the buddhi which is the decision maker which is the rational thinking logical thinking all this comes in the buddhi part of it. Ananda Maya Kosha, we will have to see in the next class because like causal body, it also needs a little bit more explanation. So we've seen the four koshas, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya. All these four we have covered. Any doubts in this thus far? Is it clear? All okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. So remember, we are not any of these. Ultimately, that is the underlying point, okay? We are not any of these sheets. Observe them. Watch their function, like how we will watch our child playing. Like that, we should just learn to observe all this interplay of uh, the wonderful harmony of our body and mind and intellect and breath. Everything is working in harmony for us to give this varied experience that we go through in everyday life, isn't it? So remember, we are not any of this. Whatever experiences that happens in these these levels are just that they are just experiences we are not that okay so this is the underlying part so uh, with this hapa i finished i wanted to do manomaya and vijnana maya together so that you know it is easy to um, take it in the same line so luckily we did that yeah thank god so we'll finish the class with our closing prayers all right oh. Purnamada Mada, Poor Namidam, Poor Nat, Poor Namudachete, Poor Nasia, Poor Namadaya, Poor Nameva, Sushete, O Shanti, 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 Hurry, Yom, Shri Guru Guna Maha, Hurry, Thank you so much. So I'll see you all next Friday, okay, with uh, what is in Ananda Maya Kosha, and then one more verse on the Koshas, and then we will move on to other interesting stuff. All right. So <laughs> thank you so much. Take good care of yourself. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.